corporate charter. This is, this, this is not the Article 6 Constitution that says this Constitution, the one that was written in 1780-89. It was the Constitution that was assembled and put together in, in 1871. It's not this Constitution that they speak of in, in Article 6 of the Constitution, the original Constitution. It's a Constitution that resembles this Constitution. When they said this Constitution in Article 6, what are they saying? They're saying this moment in time, this Constitution. It's not a living document. It is very specific. The one they have now is living because they can change it up and do whatever they want. And very soon they will. In the 1870s, that's when Congress started giving the banks the right to rule. They start stripping away of freedoms by developing the corporation. You know, a piece of paper. A piece of paper. And of course, you go on to 1913 and the beginning of the 20th century, that's when they, they officially gave away the power of our economy to the banks. By the early 20th century, the U.S. had already implemented and removed a few central banking systems, which were swindled into place by ruthless banking interests. At this time, the dominant families in the banking and business world were the Rockefellers, the Morgans, the Warburgs, the Rothschilds. And in the early 1900s, they sought to push, once again, legislation to create another central bank. So what is a central bank? A central bank is an institution that produces the currency of an entire nation. Based on historical precedent, two specific powers are inherent in central banking practice. The control of interest rates and the control of the money supply or inflation. The central bank does not simply supply a government's economy with money, it loans it to them at interest. Then through the use of increasing and decreasing the supply of money, the central bank regulates the value of the currency being issued. It is critical to understand that the entire structure of this system can only produce one thing in the long run. Debt. It doesn't take a lot of ingenuity to figure this scam out. For every single dollar produced by the central bank is loaned at interest. That means every single dollar produced is actually the dollar plus a certain percent of debt based on that dollar. And since the central bank has the monopoly over the production of the currency for the entire country, and they loan each dollar out with immediate debt attached to it, where does the money to pay for the debt come from? It can only come from the central bank again, which means the central bank has to perpetually increase its money supply to temporarily cover the outstanding debt created, which in turn